Hey y'all, hi. So I bought myself some makeup. I haven't tried it on yet. And in this video, I'm just going to try it on for the first time on camera. It's one of the quints from the Pat McGrath holiday collection, the one called Bronze Bliss. And I also bought a blush from Pat McGrath at the same time, but it's not the holiday blush. It's one that's part of the permanent collection and it's called Flirtatious. I've opened them and I've swatched them for an Instagram real, but I haven't put them on my face yet. And I can't wait. The swatches were very promising. I'm feeling like I might have made a good decision. And I want to be clear that I didn't use my channel's budget for self-sponsored review on these products. And I didn't buy them for review. I bought them with my own personal budget because I wanted them, because I thought that I wanted to own them enough to spend my money on them. Most of the makeup that I buy for review, the makeup that I spend my review budget on, is stuff that I really probably wouldn't buy myself if I didn't have a YouTube channel. I'm buying it specifically to generate content. And for the most part, I'm trying not to let my personal feelings of acquisitiveness and discernment enter into it. That's working pretty well for me, but I don't want to lose touch entirely with the consumer experience of narrowing down my choices, looking at my budget, thinking about how much I can afford, and making those really careful decisions, really hoping that I'm not going to have any regrets about the things that I buy, because I think for most of you, that's the experience of buying makeup. So I could have bought these with the review budget for review. I mean, one of them is a new release and a holiday launch after all. But I knew that this is the kind of thing that I could have seen myself buying with my own budget if I had never started a YouTube channel. And I felt like this is the perfect opportunity to do a little bit of straight up consumerism, buying makeup just as a makeup lover, and then to give feedback on the experience from that position. If you're new here, while well, you've just kind of gotten an earful about the meticulous way in which I approach the work of reviewing makeup on YouTube and talking about beauty and beauty consumerism in general. So, you know, that's the vibe. And if you enjoy it, I hope you'll subscribe. Now let's go ahead and get into the meat of the video. As you may or may not be able to tell, I'm already wearing makeup. I've done a little bit with my brows. I have put on some base. No, I didn't even bring the products down here to show you, but it's once again a mix of the RMS foundation and the white Lady Gaga Triclone foundation. That combination is really doing it for me right now. On my lips, I'm wearing a light layer of this Gucci lipstick, which is called A Royal Scandal, and the khaki lip liner from Thrive. And TBH, I think I'm wearing a little bit of Thai food on my lips. I got all ready to film and then I was super hungry. So I had some lunch and you know, the lipstick got worn away a little bit. That's more the vibe. I've been having great success lately with doing my lips first because I'm realizing I want to be wearing bold fall lips. But if I do my cheeks and my eyes first, my lips don't stand a chance. I get there and I chicken out. I feel like I'll be wearing too much makeup if I do this. But if I do this first, then I can calibrate everything to it. And that's what I'm going to do, even though I'm testing these products. I don't think I'm going to go super hard with them. Hopefully it'll still be instructive and you know I'll give you swatches too. Let's start with the palette because I know that that's what everybody wants to see the most. Here's what it looks like inside. Again, I already swatched it for real. There's a really good close-up. My first impressions from swatching it are these. One, the black is a little bit more of a soft charcoal than I was expecting it to be. It's kind of a charcoal black. Two, the other four shadows are all really high voltage shimmery, super special, although they're not the baked special shades. They have variety mixed in them. They're variegated, kind of. You know, they're like different colors of sparkles mixed in them. They're really soft and creamy and flaky in that wonderful way. They are gratifying to touch much in the way that the shiny but not baked special shades in Moonlit Seduction are really gratifying. And I'm going to compare them to some of these, especially the ones that are similar in color. Let's do that first, the metallics first, and then I'll swatch the black, the matte charcoal black at the end kind of as its own thing. They're just wonderful to touch. They have that sort of creamy, flaky, powdery quality. So it looks like the one on my pointer finger, the first one, is actually a little bit semi-sheer. Like it's going to give us that sheer wet look quality. I'm very gratified by how rich this brown is. Isn't that a beautiful kind of mahogany brown? And the one on the end looks like it could lean a little bit copper, but not too copper. The silver looks very shiny. 
So the very first one, the one that I feel like I'll use on my brow bone and to kind of soften and blend around the edges, I wish they were a little bit more sheer and had more chunks of sparkle in it, like that really mica-rich wet look shine. As it is, it's pretty creamy, still kind of wet look, but a little bit creamier than I would have liked personally. And my other right out of the gate slight drawback is just that I do feel like this last shade is kind of going to go orange on me, but it's the ruddy side of orange. It's something that I can get with from time to time, so it could be worse. The really exciting ones to me are the two center shades. This platinum is so sparkly. It has like micro glitters in it, you know, really, really pretty. And this shade of dark bronze is basically my favorite color in makeup, and they both feel so creamy. What these feel like to me is a, a special version of the Pat McGrath metallic formula. So not the big special shades, of course, and not even quite what these four shades in Moonlit Seduction are doing because they, to me, most of them have more of that sheer base with a ton of sparkly pigment packed in. They have more of that quality. And these feel like a little more creamy, more blended, but just with texture. And I'm happy about that because even though the special shades are really special and they're really exciting, when I first reviewed my first Pat McGrath palette, which was Midnight Sun, I said that I felt like the metallic formula was actually my favorite thing about Pat McGrath, like the thing that impressed me the most out of everything and was the most distinctive. Because I feel like every brand has a metallic formula, and in a sense it's like not that hard to do. I feel like brands struggle more to create mattes. And so to make a metallic, everyone has a good one is what I'm kind of trying to say, and so to make a metallic formula that really stands apart in the way that this one does is quite the feat, and that was why it impressed me so much. So it's exciting to have a special version, like enhanced metallics from Pat McGrath basically, and in shades that I think that I'll get a lot of use out of. These shadows do have names. I just tend to think of them as like the platinum, the dark bronze, rather than by their names. But this really shiny one in the center, the platinum, is called Lunar Luxury. So I'm going to put it on my pointer finger of this hand and the platinum from Moonlit Seduction on my middle finger. They're different. They're really different. Wow, the Moonlit Seduction platinum really looks like a graphite compared to what we're seeing in the holiday quint. I feel like that answers that question. Both beautiful eyeshadows, but very different versions of uh, grungy silver. So on my pointer finger, I'm taking Nude Moon, which is the palest shade in this palette. I'm going to compare that both to, I don't remember what this is, Skin Show Moon Glow, or is that the one from Skin, Skin to See? <laughs> Something like that. The shade in the Moonlit Seduction palette that's supposed to perform the same function. And I'm also going to show you how different that looks, how different they both look from this shiny gold that really is like flaky mica, flaky rich gold mica suspended in a bit of a sheer base. So again, my pointer finger is the uh, the holiday quint and the other two are from Moonlit Seduction. And there you can really see the difference between the non-baked special shade in Moonlit Seduction, which is really shiny, and this one from the Quint. Yeah, this tells me that that champagne shade in the Quint is definitely, it's there kind of for a utilitarian reason. You know what I mean? Even though it's a bit shinier than the one in Moonlit Seduction. A lot of Pat McGrath palettes have a shade like that in them. I actually have found it surprisingly useful in the two motherships that I own. Okay, let's do the bronze from Moonlit Seduction. Oh shoot, I'm doing it in the other order. I'm sorry. The mothership is on my pointer finger this time. And I'm comparing that to the other two bronzes, the two in here. So the bronze in Moonlit Seduction, this one, it's the palest. It's like the most gold. The other two are really looking brown compared to it, and I'm happy to see that. This also shows to me that slightly ruddy bronze in the holiday quint, the one that I was feeling a little disappointed was maybe leaning orange. It's got really red in it. It's got like a reddish copper rather than an orangey tone, and I like that. That actually makes me kind of more excited to use it. So these comparisons are really making me feel like Lunar Luxury, the center shade, is really the star shade in this palette because it's the shiniest of all of them. I really like that shiny shade. It's super flaky, really reflective fun to swatch, but it's the dark brown that really has me. Like, that's the one that I can't wait to put all over my lids. So I'm going to go wash these swatches off, and I'm going to zoom you in and create a look. Oh, but I didn't swatch the the matte. You can really see where my priorities are. It's close to black when it's built up like that, right? 
And yeah, it looks like it can build to something like black. That The initial swatch that I got of it when I was doing the reel was a little bit softer than this. It's actually turning out more than I expected. There up close, you can kind of see that it's softer than some like blackest black shadows. It's a softer black, for example, than my top. You can see the difference there. It's not quite as inky, but it'll definitely do. Okay, now I'm going to wash my hands off and then I will zoom you in and I'm gonna go bananas. Okay, I'm back. I really want to kind of like vibe out while I am playing with these shadows for the first time. I want to really focus on the experience and see what it's like, especially given that I, you know, I chose this not for a review, but for myself. So I want to use it like privately. I'll film it, but I'm not going to narrate. And then I'll check in afterwards and I'll tell you what I did and how it went. Okay, I'm back. I'm back from the zone and it was very interesting and ultimately gratifying. I think I got a little fallout that I forgot to wipe away. Only the tiniest bit. In fact, I'm barely feeling like I need to do any repairs. Here's what happened. I immediately got overexcited and forgot two crucial things. One, I forgot that the cardinal rule of Pat McGrath shadows for me, based on what I've learned with my two motherships, is that they all always work better with a brush than with fingers. Even though I usually apply my eyeshadow look, the base of it, with fingers and then kind of build from there with brushes to do more detail work, I find that my Pat McGrath shadows just work better with brushes across the board. But I was so excited and I went right into my finger into the dark bronze, which is called Bronzed Mink. I started putting it all over my lids and it went perfectly fine. I mean, it's creamy and it stuck to my lids and the color was really rich. But then as I was doing that, I was like, oh yeah, I usually do this with a brush with Pat McGrath. So then I went in with a brush and it worked, of course, beautifully with a brush. So I built the base of the look. I was really tempted to just do a one shadow look, like that color all over my lids. It's basically like the eyeshadow version of the bronze and Tom Ford Naked Bronze, I feel. In fact, let's do a comparison. Yeah, they're very similar. No wonder I like it so much. This one on my ring finger, that's Tom Ford Naked Bronze. And that on my pointer finger is the bronze from the Pat McGrath. Actually, applied to my skin, the Pat McGrath, it's even a little bit more olive, like just a little bit more nuanced, a little darker. It's got that gold reflect in it, whereas the Tom Ford is leaning a little more copper. So I might even like this color better than the cream from Tom Ford Naked Bronze. That's a real upset. The Tom Ford cream is the one closer to my thumb. So they're not quite as similar as I thought they were, but they have a lot in common, especially from certain angles. I just feel like this is the beginning of the rest of my life during which I'm going to be applying this eyeshadow bronzed mink all over my lids by itself most of the days of my life, most of the time. As I started putting it on my lids, I was like, this as a mono color, a monochromatic look is my absolute jam. And I was tempted to just leave it, but then I was like, Hannah, you're filming, you have to do more. So I went into the charcoal black, which I learned is called La Vie en Noir. So I started working with it in the outer corner and it was interesting. The pigment is a lot softer than like a blackest black. And I felt like it was actually a bit softer of pigment than some of the deepest Pat McGrath shadows, the matte, the dark brownish black mattes in the motherships that I usually use in this role. It felt like I was getting a bit of a softer color and that I was having to work a little harder to build it up to full pigment. And in fact, I would go so far as to say that the light wash of that shadow in the outer corners of my eyes that I put down first, it came across a little bit patchy. It was so soft and it spread so thin on top of where bronzed mink had sort of had jagged edges as I got it towards my corners but didn't fill in my corners because I knew I was going in with the black there. It's like it overlapped with the jagged edges of bronzed mink in a semi-sheer way and it ended up looking a little bit patchy. So I definitely had to go in and pack it and build and blend and I think I did that sort of three times softly to get it to the point where I felt like it was really holding its own. But it got there and it was easy to manipulate, easy to work with, but I just feel like that is a quality of note of this palette. You're not really getting the blackest black in that way and you have to work with it if you want a lot of contrast. The benefit of that though is that I felt like it ended up looking very lived in. The way that both bronzed mink and that charcoal black sort of gripped the skin, became one with the skin. As soon as I had put them both down and gotten them how I wanted to be, I looked 
looked in the mirror and I was like, wow, texturally, it kind of looks like I've been wearing this for five hours. And that is a very high compliment coming from me. I love that quality in an eyeshadow, that lived in quality. The last thing that I did was to take Nude Moon and use a fluffy brush and fluff it kind of all over my brow bone. And you know, it did make my brow bone shine. It's not quite as high voltage as the really glittery, mica-packed, shiny, slimy, sheer versions of that that I tend to put there. Or this shade from Midnight Sun, which is like the highest voltage version of the kind of thing I use that for ever. It's like the shiniest eyeshadow ever. No, what I ended up with on my brow bone was more like this eyeshadow from Midnight Sun. A little bit of a softer, glowy shine, but it's, it's there, it's shining, and it blended out pretty well. Made it look a little bit more editorial, I feel, a little bit more layered. I put my favorite eyeliner on my waterline. It's the Victoria Beckham Bronze Liner, and I used the City Beauty Beyond Mascara Mascara, and this is it. This is the look. I'm really feeling right now like I nailed it in terms of anticipating that this would be the perfect quint for me to get a very me look. This is my favorite eyeshadow look, and all of my favorite pieces of makeup up and my favorite palettes, like the gold palette from Natasha Denona or the Tom Ford Naked Bronze Duo, they're all things that I can use to get some version of this look, something very close to this. And this is just nailing it with only three out of the five eyeshadows. This is the kind of thing that I could take as like my only palette if I went, I don't know, on like a long trip, like a three week trip or something, or to a tango festival or something, because it's not only giving me the shadows that I need for what is for me my my, like baseline, my go-to look, but then I also have that really shiny platinum for some variety or that kind of ruddy reddish version of a bronze for some color. Now it's a little bit too soon to tell because this is my first time using this and I'm all excited about it, but there is a chance based on the experience that I had right now that these shadows might require a little bit more babying than standard Pat McGrath Mothership palette eyeshadows do. I feel like for me, the hallmark of Pat McGrath shadows is that they like apply themselves and blend themselves. They feel like they're doing exactly what I want them to do with like barely a touch from me. It's like as soon as I think about what I'm going to do next, the shadows have done it. These didn't quite feel like that. I felt like I was tinkering with them a little bit more, but it's not as though they didn't work or disappointed me or I don't like the, the way that they looked at all. And you know, the feel of them, the swatches, the pans, the way that they feel under my hand, the way that they look, all that is very Pat McGrath and very gratifying. And I might just be kind of borrowing trouble by saying this. If I know more by the time this review posts, I'll put it in the comments down below. But that's the thing I'm going to be paying really close attention to as I continue to play with this. Like, do they behave exactly the way that other Pat McGrath shadows behave? Overall, though, I'm really pleased. The thing that could have happened that would have let me down would be that these could have looked different tonally in person than they look on the side. The two brownish bronzes could have been like way more orange than they are or way more gold than they are or more pale than they are. The platinum could have had that sort of blue silver shift, that like seal blue silver, which it doesn't have in person. In person it more has that warm like silver and gold mixed together quality that I love. It's like the true neutrality of the colors. That was what I was hoping for and the palette has really delivered on that. I'll be paying close attention to the formulas, but so far so good. And you know, if the colors had been wrong, it would have been a total non-starter, but the colors were right. So so we're gonna keep going. Let's take a look at the blush. I'm gonna put my hair back a little bit. I had my hair back in a clip like this the other day on camera and a lot of you were like, can you do a tutorial? And it's just, it was just this. So this is the tutorial, okay? It's just like a, just one of those claw clips. I actually just dried my hair for the diffuser so the bangs are really doing the most curl wise, but you know, just clip some of it back. And then sometimes, I'm gonna do it now because the, we can't have this. Sometimes I'll, use bobby pins too. I think the other day though I didn't have bobby pins. It was like a lot of those bangs were were down and it was just a clip in there. Now that we've lost volume on the sides, I feel like there's too much volume on the top. Hold on. Yeah, that's looking better. Okay, at least we got all those bits out 
of my face so that I can really see what's going on with the blush. And then I'll probably take it back down. So my friends, Hope Mess Tom and Amira, who both have YouTube channels, and I'll link them both, they both have told me separately and insistently that I should get the Pat McGrath blush in Desert Orchid and spoke very highly of the texture and the buildability and the subtlety and said that I would really love Desert Orchid because it's sort of this burnt brownish color. But I looked at a lot of swatches of Desert Orchid and it is incredibly beautiful and I just feel like it leans a little bit too. It's like that beautiful warm brown and those browns tend to go orange on me. I was really into the idea. I believe them. I believe that they know what I'll like and I really wanted to try what they were recommending. But when I dug deep, I was like, I don't think that's the color for me. But then I saw that there's this color, Flirtatious. And curiously, I feel like it's showing up as a richer and pinker color on camera, especially at close range. There it is at close range and you can see how beautiful it is. But I feel like on camera, that's just going to look like a regular blush color. Whereas in person, it has this like dustiness. It's like a very desaturated mauve. It's very, very old gum, like closer than I think many things have ever come. It's much more neutral than most blushes. And most blush ranges don't have a blush this neutral in them. And now that I see it in person, I'm very, very excited. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on. Wow, it's pigmented. Okay, so it's giving me more pigment than I thought that it would. It's just giving me more. It's more of a blush than I thought it would be. And maybe it's because, I mean, this is a blush brush, but it's kind of a dense one. Maybe I'll get more of a wash if I apply it with a softer brush. And I'm kind of looking forward to doing that. The sheen is really beautiful. It applied really beautifully. I feel like the color, it's almost giving me that kind of like soft peachy bronze that I think that Desert Orchid is for a lot of people. But I was worried that it would be too orange on me. This is just like what I imagine Amira and Hot Mess Tom thought that Desert Orchid would look like on me. And I think that this is like the one. It does look very healthy. Again, I'm going to need to play with it more. I want to use it with a softer, looser brush. It's been a really long time since I wanted a powder blush or bought a powder blush, but I have been reaching more for like my old standard powder blushes. The ones that I used to use a ton are the Lancome Blush Subtils, but they're really old and I think that they've kind of like started to go off and lose their pigment. So I've kind of been looking for a replacement for them. And you know, I've been using my old faithful Kevin Aquan Neo Bronzer a lot. And it's great, but I think that because I've been using it so much and I'm starting to think that I might be entering a little bit more of a powder blush phase, I've been hoping to diversify that part of my makeup collection a little bit. And this is definitely gonna do that. It looks a little brighter on me than I was expecting though. Based on the swatches and based on the way that it looks in the pan, it's like the pigment packs more of a punch and the color is brighter on me. I was hoping that it would be just like incredibly decent saturated, but it's just not. So at this stage, I'm kind of feeling like the eyeshadow palette is the one that was for me the absolute smash hit, unquestionable win. I'm so glad I decided to buy it. I'm not sorry that I bought the blush. I don't regret it. I think I need to spend more time with it and play around with different kinds of application. I think I'm really going to enjoy playing with it and having it. So it's worth it to me, you know what I mean, to have gotten them both. But having just tried them on, I have a little bit more reservations about whether this is going to end up being a forever ever classic for me. Whereas this, I feel like is kind of an instant classic. Like I can't wait to use it tomorrow again. And I can't wait to use it again the next day too. That is it. I think that that's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed this. It does feel a little bit different opening and playing with makeup for the first time that I bought myself and that I got my hopes up for. Because, you know, that's the difference if I buy something for a review. I really have no horse in that race. I'm trying to go into those reviews from a place of total neutrality, just as if the thing sort of showed up and assess it really, really objectively. But this isn't an objective assessment, right? I, I really want them to work. If I had been more objective about this, I might have put it on and right away been like, oh no, it's so bright. This isn't what I was hoping for at all. But I really want it to work. So I'm just handling it with a little bit more care, giving it a little bit more leeway. I want it to work because I bought it for myself, you know? So going through it has kind of shown me both that it's good to do this from time to time to just have this kind of like more intimate experience of buying something and testing it on camera. But it's also kind of shown me that the neutrality that I'm 
buying for myself when I use that budget for self-sponsored review is really working. It's really creating a different kind of headspace in which I test makeup, even if it didn't come in PR, you know what I mean? Even if I chose it. The fact that this felt really different has shown me that. And that's actually really good to know. Unexpected. I wasn't necessarily expecting to have that insight or to hold forth about that in this video, but it's occurring to me now. And, and I'm actually really glad to have some clarity about that. That's it. I'm going to go subscribe if you're not subscribed. I hope you're all doing well. Don't forget to take extra good care of yourself so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 